Okay, ham radio operators, today I'm going to talk to you <clears throat> about 10 meters and what antenna you really should use on 10 meters. Now, some of you may have used the 10 meter dipole, and you notice you not really hear much because the signals were down. Unless somebody may, may, might be in another state or country on a big beam. Okay? Same thing with 20 meters. All right, for 10 meters, what you really want to use is a half-wave antenna. So you do this, get back on the J-pole calculator, the one you use to build your 2-meter J-pole. Okay, use that calculation, so that gives you to build a 10-meter J-pole. Okay, you can build it out of copper pipe, but copper pipe is expensive now. Okay, it gone up in price, way up. So get aluminum tubing. This place is sells brand new aluminum tubing you can get, or go check the recycle yard for aluminum tubing. While you're there, buy a quarter inch aluminum plate and. Uh, buy uh, some U-bolts, drill some holes in two different directions to, to fit those U-bolts uh, there, okay? So, you also may buy it from a machine shop if they'll part with it. They may have a scrap piece. Yeah, uh, what you want to do is build a 10 meter J-pole and that will give you a lot more receive signal, more strength. Okay. Uh, my brother-in-law did this once before. Uh, he took the configuration of a J-pole and made it into a wire antenna. And it worked really good. So you take <coughs> that. So you get the same problem with uh, 20 meters. And you make it work in... Uh, not much to receive unless somebody has a big beam and then you, get, you pick up strong signals and you give them back a strong signal, signal because they got that big beam. Now if you got a tower, let's say you got a 70 foot tower, you can add a spike, take that quarter inch plate, measure down so far from the top and add the driven element, okay? Exactly what you're doing is a J-pole idea there, okay? Spike, that's what that little short stub is on a J-pole, is a spike. Okay. Now, really, if you guys want to do 10 meters, uh, 10 meters are live, it should be alive right now because Citizen Band is uh, really active. Or you could buy a CB radio antenna and put that up. Somebody may have one laying around in their yard they want to sell. You can probably get it for 30 bucks, whatever. All right. So, and I tell you this, don't buy those cheap uh, radios out there, okay? Stick with uh, an Icon, Kenwood, or a Yesu, all right? Because there's no quality, all right? Now, you might get someone who has an old... Who knows how to convert a CB radio to 10 meters. They might be able to do it for you. I heard the Cobra 2000 could be done. The thing about that radio it has a very good noise blanker. The 2950 RCI or more. Well, it, that's really not that good of a radio. Okay, not quality. All right. It's not ham radio quality. It's just a modified chicken band radio that they made to go up to 10 meters. So, another antenna you could probably build for uh, 10 meters is a loop, okay? Longer wire, more wire, so you need four poles to set it up. You can use uh, four by fours or, or if someone has a bunch of telephone poles, you can stand them up, four corners of that loop antenna to those telephone poles but spread them out as far as you can in case you ever want to do a 40 or 80 meter loop all right because you want to talk locally 
it's better off doing 10 meters than trying to do it on 40 because if you're in the same town as somebody you're i seen this done i talk, tried to talk to a friend oh he had a strong signal oh yeah a beautiful signal but uh the weird phenomenon uh, in the propagation the audio in the transmit was very low okay i don't do this uh a solar burst happening whatever so you uh if you really want to uh do some 10 meter activity and you never thought about it build yourself a 10 meter j pole and i said you get, go buy a quarter inch aluminum plate all right or if you got a friend who uh, works in a machine shop, he might be able to make you a T-fitting like they have for copper pipe that you slide your aluminum tubing in and you just put in some screws there to hold it in place. But you use the long side of the J-pole for your antenna. So you put the ground wire to the short side, which would be like 9 feet long, and uh, the long side would be a uh, transmit, so you put the center wire to the the uh, long side of that J pole. Okay, it has to be. You can come up. You look at the calculator. It'll tell you come up so far. It'll be like ten inches. That's where you mount your uh, feed point. Okay, you can. Uh, drill a hole and put a screw in it uh, and solder a piece of coax to bring up your coax center piece up to that and attach it there all right so 10 inches from the the, the quarter pl inch plate up that's where you put your feed point give it a try uh because you know businesses are trying to steal the frequencies okay and uh all those don't have money to get on uh 10 meters i mean uh to buy an hf rig they get on 80 or 40 or 20 but uh you can find an old unit in 2600 or 2510 whatever uh that and j pole and 10 idea will work good for you okay so give that a try. Uh, yeah, that'd be a lot better. And not only that, uh, you, now be careful with the new cars today because because of the computer. If you like, uh, if you had two meter, you know, if you kicked it on high power, a little light bulb on the dash would come on. Well, that's RF getting in your system, so that may not be a good idea to use a radio in that car. So maybe if you can find. Uh, an older vehicle, you know, you can use it run around in your mobile and uh, talk, talk home to your wife, whatever, and no computer to hit with the RF. Anyways, of course, you know, the police department are trying to get you distracted driving, but, but if you want to walk, you're at home, you want to talk to somebody, and... You ain't really happy with the performance of a 10 meter dipole uh, try building uh, a 10 meter j pole they work really good i built one for my brother but it's a cb radio and it had to be a one inch uh, one foot longer than the 10 meter dipole but the antenna worked really good okay and it, so you just got to work out setting the SWR. If you got a friend who has an antenna analyzer, that's the best way to do it. You can tune it away. And always put your antenna far away from your radio and power supply, okay? This way you don't get a crowbar effect. Because RF travels back down the to the coax, whatever, or hit comes into the shack, it don't turn your uh, power supply off, okay? It can happen. They call it the crowbar effect. All right. Uh, just an idea. I'm not an antenna expert there. Okay. As far as building antennas. But I have some ideas. That, uh, that does work. 
know how I know this because my uh, ex-wife's brother was a ham radio operator and he showed me how to do it. And if you're going to build any antenna, like for 80 or 40, and if you want to build a dipole for 40 or 80, okay, say you need to know how much wire you got to go buy. For the total length of wire you need to buy, 468 divided by the frequency, okay. Now, you, you know, as you know, the dipole has two sides. They both got to be the exact same length. So you take the math formula, 234 divided by the frequency. All right. Now, if you want to build a 40 meter loop or an 80 meter loop, okay, that is 1005 divided by the frequency because you're going to use the total length of that wire to make your loop. All right. That's how you build the loop 1005 math formula. Okay. Now, there's guys better than me out there. That's K7ZAR. Frank, KK6FR, uh, he knows a nice little antenna he can build using the doorknob. Okay, not a doorknob on your house, but it's a component they call it the doorknob. But uh, he built one for Noel, and his antenna worked really good. Stay away from the G5RV, okay. Uh, a lot of people, you can hear the RF in their transmit. You usually ask them, are you on a G5 RV? Yep. Uh, Maypole. Uh, okay, what's nice about the Maypole? One coax. Feeding. Five different bands. Okay. So you want to do 20, 40, and 80. Use the same math formula I gave you for each band. And connect each wire to your abalum, or if you want to take a PVC cap, I recommend using a big one because it's easier to work with. You know, I use the two inch and get my fingers in there inside a lot easier. And you just attach each of those wires to your uh, abalum and feed them off different directions, okay? And you can take the same math formula Okay, and uh, the full length of wire and stuff for your dipole. You can convert, take your, you, some people have small yards. I cannot put up an 80 meter or 160 meters. Well, check out my YouTube video, 80 meter Z antenna. Okay, you can, uh, if you follow that, okay, that'll get you a four, 80 meter antenna to fit into a 40 meter yard space antenna takes up or you can put up a 160 meter antenna in a Z configuration that an 80 meter dipole would take now you may want to add okay at top your antenna there or build a ground box and when SO239 install a choke talk to KK6FR what choke he used to stop the static DC and his antenna tuner. Yeah, you can YouTube it on YouTube. Uh, snow static DC. You will see these sparks coming uh, out the PL uh, the PL259 there. Okay, uh, static comes down the antenna and blow up blow up your radio. So to kill that, you use a choke uh, or use. A 3 meg ohm 2 watt resistor okay you can put that in there run it from the center to ground okay the water the resistor and and that'll burn off the, the static DC buildup on your antenna there but during electrical storm lightning strikes it will not nothing will stop lightning okay uh, unhook it from your radio okay the coax Throw the coax into the uh, connector into a glass jar. The, okay. Anyways, uh, you could be able to uh, build a nice little antenna 
I'll get some uh, thick plexiglass, drill some holes in it because you're going to need that for support of your 10 meter J pole. You can probably want to put two or three in there from the top to the bottom, going down from the short side over to the uh, long side. This way when you go standing your antenna up, it don't flop over. It'll throw some support to the long side of your uh, 10 meter J pole. Anyhow, people, uh, give it a shot. The J pole is an ass kicking antenna. A lot of people, they put it down, but uh, <laughs> uh, J pole is hard to beat, okay? And you may have a friend that has a ton of aluminum tubing laying around his yard. And that'll keep the cost down. Okay. So you can use the money towards a better radio. Alright. Have fun. Build yourself a 10 meter J pole. Uh, like I said, there's guys out there better than me. KK6FR. K7ZAR. Uh... There's another guy out there, uh, boy, I'm trying to think. I can't think of his name right now. But ask those old timers out there, okay? Ask them what do they use for snow static DC. Uh, you say you live in California, don't snow. Well, uh, you can get static DC built up on your antenna during high winds also, okay? A little spark will uh, come out that center wire connector that goes into your radio. So you want to use some kind of static DC protector. Uh, those little lightning surge protector. Okay. Uh, now that will not protect your radio from that. Okay. And if you're going to run power, I guess uh, it's a good idea to make sure you tell the guy you want one for a legal limit there. Okay. And with the Maple antenna, what you don't need is an antenna switch box, okay? Uh, you're, you're, uh, you just hit 40, 80, 10, 20 meters. The wire you added to your maypole, as soon as you hit that band, that wire will come alive. The other wires will get canceled out. And you want to run your SWR 1.5 or lower. Okay, don't go don't go playing around with a 2SWR, okay? It'll throttle back your power on your uh, radio or your amplifier. <clears throat> so if you try running a little Maritron 11 or 8. And uh, so be careful about buying an old Henry amplifier, okay? If that radio amplifier has not been uh, updated, okay, it had the modifications to do it. That amplifier can send a spike <clears throat> back to your radio and blow it up. All right, have fun. And always let an experienced uh, guy work on your amplifier equipment there and your radio if you can. Uh, there's some guys uh, out there that knows how to do it. They may work at their home, but they, if they have a lot of test equipment and they know how to use it, chances are they can fix your radio because... <clears throat> Yesu quit working on the older models like the 1000D, the 840, but they were a good radio. I put up a 1000D up against a, a 5000 any day, okay? A lot of people saw that the Yesu FT950 gave the guys with the 5000 a run for their money. Very clean uh, transmit. Uh, the 857D, 897D, uh, the 450 Yesu, no, 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 no. The transmit on sideband in that radio is very dirty, it's not clear, it's fuzzy. I only heard like two or three of those radios that sounded good. Okay, everyone else is, uh, sounded bad, okay. Uh, I think it has a problem with, uh... RF getting it back into the the radio and transmitter there and, and this distorts Okay Yeah, you want to go 950 or better All right, anyhow have fun And my call sign is KC6 NFE. I'm not a professional the guys out there better than me. I Just learned from the guy who taught me this got him got me into a uh, ham radio and uh 
like I said, yeah, I talked to the other guys out there, they do it. And some people maybe don't like Frank because he owned a shop that worked on ham radios, but they also worked on CB. But uh, nothing wrong with that because the guy's a paying customer. Why not work on his radio and collect the money? <laughs>